discussion on jugular venous pulse as part of cardiology for medical students. Assessment of jugular venous pulse has to be done in the internal jugular vein though a beginner is often tempted to use the external jugular vein. External jugular vein may be kinked and it may not reflect the true right atrial pressure. Jugular venous pressure is measured with reference to the sternal angle. The sternal angle is 5 cm above the mid right atrium in all positions. Normal internal jugular venous pulsations are not visible in the neck in the sitting position. Hence, it is typically assessed with 45 degrees propped up position. But if the venous pressure is elevated, evaluation in sitting position is possible. Vertical distance of the upper level of the pulsations above the sternal angle is checked and measured in centimeters of JVP. Sometimes JVP may be so high that the upper level may not be visible. It may be visible in standing position in such cases. Pulsations of the earlobe will be noted in such cases. In cases without visible elevation of JVP, sustained pressure over the upper abdomen for 30 seconds may be given to elicit the abdominal jugular or hepatojugular reflux. While examining engorged jugulars, it is important to check whether they are pulsatile or non-pulsatile. Non-pulsatile engorged jugulars suggest superior vena cava obstruction, superior vena cava syndrome. Respiratory variation of the jugular venous pulsation is another important aspect. Normally, the amplitude of pulsations increases in inspiration while the upper level or jugular venous pressure falls in inspiration and the blood rushes into the right atrium. An inspiratory increase in jugular venous pressure is known as Kussmaul sign. It is seen in right heart failure and is a typical sign in constrictive pericarditis. An often asked question is how to differentiate between venous and arterial pulsations in the neck. The usual answer is venous pulsations are better seen than felt. Venous pulsation has a definite upper level. Venous pulsation has multiple waves in a cardiac cycle while arterial pulsation usually has only a single wave. Jugular venous pulse tracing resembles the right atrial pressure tracing. It has three positive waves A, C and V. It has two negative waves X and Y descents. An X prime descent may be seen after the C wave. During clinical examination, the descents are better appreciated than the waves of which Y descent is the most prominent. On visual inspection, only A and V waves are visible while C wave can be documented only in a pulse recording. A wave is due to atrial contraction. It is prominent in tricuspid stenosis, pulmonary stenosis and pulmonary hypertension. Prominent A wave does not occur in an unrestricted ventricular septal defect. Intermittent large A waves may be seen in complete heart block when atrial contraction occurs with a closed tricuspid valve. These are called cannon waves. A wave is absent in atrial fibrillation as there is no organized atrial contraction. C wave in jugular venous pulse is a carotid artifact. In right atrial pressure tracing, it is due to bulging of the tricuspid valve into the right atrium during isovolumic contraction. V wave occurs during venous filling after the ventricular contraction. In tricuspid regurgitation, C and V waves fuse together to form a prominent C V wave. It is also called just a prominent V wave. X descent is absent in tricuspid regurgitation. Y descent can be prominent in constrictive pericarditis and is known as Frederick sign. Y descent is shallow in tricuspid stenosis. In cardiac tamponade, the Y descent is absent. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe, like, share and post your valuable comment below this video.